guys, it's YB. So this video is going to be about my life, my life story. I am turning 30 in a few days on October 20th. When you're younger, 30 sounds like such an old age. It feels like you're suddenly jumping out of this amazing 20s to something dreading like 30s. But as I am getting closer to this age and as my friends around are now in their 30s, I've realized that 30s is not old at all. You feel the same as you did in the 20s, but you are just more grounded, you have more experience, and really there's no huge difference. Age is just a number. These things are what I'm realizing as I am aging. But because 30 sounds like a big step to many people, including me, I wanted to go over kind of all the stuff that I've done in my life until now and be excited for the next step forward. So let's start from all the way in the beginning, 1993, October 20th. Hey guys, before we continue, let me quickly go over YesStyle. So thank you YesStyle for sponsoring this video. By now, you guys know YesStyle is where I get all my Korean skincare and makeup. They just have tons of options. So this huge box is their winter advent calendar from YesStyle. This has 24 skincare and makeup items that are worth over $500. You can get this entire box for $164.90. You can first open the top. Oh, and look, there's a mirror even. And each of these have a date on them. So you can start opening it December 1st if you want every day. We're gonna open some today just so you guys can see. And there's even a second part, a drawer, and there's more in here. So there's so many products in here. These are all individually packaged, so cute. Oh my God, and th this is the Pyongyang Yul's cleansing balm. Oh, we got a brush set. This is basically a heaven for beauty lovers. Well, I won't ruin the surprise anymore for you guys. So get your own advent calendar today and treat yourself to daily surprises of these makeup and skincare items. And now back to the video. I was born in Seoul, Korea, and I lived here in Yeoido, Seoul, Korea until I was 12. But some of my core memories are hanging out with my family, my grandparents, my brother being born in 1998, and my whole family going to parks together, going skating. I think the earliest memory I have that's pretty clear is when I broke my nose when I was seven. I was running up the stairs with my grandma, and my grandma clearly told me not to run. I ignored and kept running, and I fell and hit my nose on the sharp corner of the stairs. I still remember that pain. It hurt so bad bad and I was crying and luckily my dad is doctor so we went to his hospital and I still remember when we took the x-ray I was praying inside please don't be broken but my nose was broken and my dad being the awesome plastic surgeon he was he fixed my broken bone and I had to wear this cast over my nose and that was not a comfortable experience but I do remember that pretty clearly. So the big change in my life came when I was 12 years old. So my parents decided to send me to America for many reasons but one main thing was that they knew that I was, I don't know how to say this, but too creative to stay in Korea. In Korea, at least back then, the educational system was very very strict and you had to study really really hard and get the top of the class to make it to anything, to become a doctor, to become a lawyer, all these professions that were respected and these were the ones everyone was going for and since young age I was a very creative kid I love to write stories I love to tell stories and my parents realized I was meant to be somewhere where I could experience more freedom other than just studying you know science and math all day so they sent me to America when I was 12 and at first I hated this idea because of course I had grown up my entire life in Korea all my friends were there why would I leave to go to a foreign country where I barely spoke the language and start a new life. So I hated it, but I'm so, so glad and thankful that my parents still sent me to America. And I actually went to Oregon first because my grandparents were there. My dad's side grandparents were living in Oregon at the time. And I was sent there because my parents couldn't come quite yet. They still had my little brother, they still had to work. So I went alone to attend the boarding school. Now this is a little side story, but that school turned out to be a Scientology school. My parents had no idea. I also had no idea. I mean, I didn't even know what Scientology was and I don't even think my parents knew what that was. It's not like they shoved it in your face that you're learning Scientology there, but now that I look back, all the books we were studying from were written by Ron Hubbard and there were some things that were probably odd if I were to go back now. But I still had a lot of fun. It was a really fun school. I made a lot of friends. But yeah, that's like a fun story I tell my friends. 
but other than that, my two years in Oregon, I learned English. I took an ESL class, which is the English as a second language, which all the foreigner students take to learn English. Then when I turned 14, my whole family actually moved to California, actually to Palos Verdes, where I am now. And I started attending Palos Verdes High School because I was 14. Now my dad had to go back and forth because he was still a doctor in Korea and you cannot be a doctor in America. So my dad still had to work in Korea to support our life in America and I'm so so thankful for that. My mom stopped her work and stayed with us so she could take care of us. I'm so thankful for that too. My parents really sacrificed so my brother and I could be here. And I attended high school here, learned the new California life coming from Oregon. It was definitely eye-opening. A lot of things were different but I loved it. I still love it here which is why I'm still here. And also this is kind of going towards my career. I started being interested in filmmaking. I was always interested in storytelling and story writing but as an elective I took a video production class in high school and this class was so fun for me. I thought editing was exactly like writing. You're writing a story but visually and I just loved that idea. So when it became time to apply to college I applied to a few film schools and this is when I told myself that I will only attend a film school if I get into the best film school and the reason I thought that was because coming from a family of doctors I knew and still with a Korean thinking in my head something artsy like this was very risky it was not financially stable and I wanted to be financially stable like being a doctor so I actually applied to half pharmacy schools and half film schools and I hoped that I would get into the best film school which was USC um, if not, I would attend a pharmacy school and do a total different job. If I didn't get into USC, I probably wouldn't be here doing this right now. I'll be a pharmacist. <laughs> so I actually got into a pharmacy school first, but and we toured it and everything, University of the Pacific. And then I got my acceptance letter from USC. And wow, that was a really, really good day. I was so happy. Going to USC film school, the USC School of Cinematic Arts was a dream. It was so much fun. I learned so much and I really, really had a great college experience. And actually during my USC years was when I met my current husband, Herbert. I met him actually my sophomore year and he went back to Germany for a year. I thought I'd never see him again. And then he came back another semester. So then Herbert and I hung out a lot all of my senior year of college. I graduated a semester early, so in the winter. And that's when we became official. And 2016, so when I graduated college, I started my job at BuzzFeed. In between that, I was actually interning at Fox TV and I thought I would maybe stay there, but then I looked up BuzzFeed and they were really booming at the time and they had an internship program open. And I just applied, you know, hoping that I would get something and I got in. I go more in detail about this in my other video, how I got my job or my career path. But essentially, I switched to BuzzFeed and went back to being an intern again, but it was the best decision that I made in my life because that just started my whole career. So I was at BuzzFeed for a about two and a half years. The first three months was my internship. It was a very intense program. So even after the internship, basically half of the people got cut and the remaining half made it to the fellowship, which was for another three months. And then if you had proven yourself to, well, you basically had to make videos that made a million views, over a million views on YouTube and those remaining became full-time employees and I was able to ask to become an editor and I became a full-time editor there which is where I met the Try Guys, where I worked for Worth It and got to work on so many cool shows. During this time a lot of things were happening in my life as well. Harper and I were doing long distance because he was not planning on staying in America after college but because he met me and he wanted to stay longer he actually got a job in Florida and we were doing long distance from Florida to LA. We would visit each other a lot um, um, he came to see me almost every month which is very very nice and I thank him for that and sometimes I would go there to see him whenever I had time. It was crazy times. I was getting used to living alone for the first time in my life. I got an apartment in Hollywood so I could commute to BuzzFeed. I would bring Louis with me to work every day and after two years of long distance in 2018 Herbert was able to move back to LA and actually live with me and this year was also when I left BuzzFeed and joined the Try Guys. The Try Guys left BuzzFeed and then around August 
2018, I left BuzzFeed to join them. And the whole story is in my other video as well. But pretty much Keith posted a Facebook status asking for a video editor. And I commented as a joke like me, haha. And he actually private messaged me and said, if you're actually down, we would love to have you. And off I went. And since 2018, so many other things have happened. We have moved numerous times. And this year we got married and we went on our honeymoon and got to travel all over the world. I feel very fortunate and I thank my parents, my, my entire family and Herbert also and my pets for keeping me sane this whole time. Just everyone around me who's given me this opportunity and kept me safe and happy this whole time so I could grow as a person. I would also like to dedicate this video to my mom's side grandparents who have passed away recently. They raised me when I was little and I have so many good memories with them since I was a kid and I'm really thankful. I miss them a lot and I hope they're watching us from the sky. Um, and yeah, just so many people in my life that contributed to who I am today. So yeah, that was my life story until now and I am turning 30. It's gonna be the new era. Like I said before, my goal is to one day become a professor and hope I can work towards that goal. And if I could say anything to me in my early 20s or me when I was a kid, would be that don't give up and keep trying new things so that you can become who you are in the future. And I'm still gonna keep trying new things and not be intimidated by certain changes because everything is exciting and everything is a new opportunity. And just recently I got to speak at Vid Summit in Texas in front of so many people and I really love that I can inspire other people and teach my experience to others. So here is 2.30 and thank you guys so much for coming along with me this whole time and I can't wait to see what the future brings. So thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye!